Welcome to Speak English Now podcast with your host, Georgiana. The podcast that will help you to speak English fluently with no grammar and no textbooks. Hi, everyone. I'm Georgiana, founder of SpeakEnglishPodcast.com. My mission is to help you to speak English fluently. In this episode, I'll be discussing some more about some of the most common phrasal verbs. After that, you'll be able to practice your grammar skills with an interesting point of view lesson. Okay, let's continue with the phrasal verbs. A phrasal verb is just a verb and a particle. For example, get in. If you haven't checked out the first episode about phrasal verbs, please do it. Remember, you only need to learn the most frequently used phrasal verbs. Also, instead of learning all the different meanings of each phrasal verb, simply learn one or two common meanings. Okay, let's get started. Today, we'll play a bit with get. The first one is get along or get on. Do you have friends? Then you'll probably use this phrasal verb. It means to like each other. For example, I'm surprised how well I get along with my mother-in-law. The older and younger members get along well. I get along very well with foreign people. You can also use get on instead of get along. It's exactly the same meaning. For example, I'm surprised how well I get on with my mother-in-law. The older and younger members get on well. I get on very well with foreign people. The next phrasal verbs are Go back, come back, and get back. Sometimes these phrasal verbs are confusing for the English students. First, let's see the difference between go and come. An example. Please, Jim, come here. I need to talk to you. Please, Jim, go to the supermarket to buy some food. As you can see, when Jim approaches you, he comes. When Jim doesn't approach you and goes somewhere else, he goes. Now let's add the word back. Jim, come back from the supermarket. I've just ordered a pizza. In this first example, Jim is at the supermarket and returns to where he was before. Another example. Tomorrow, Jim will have to go back to the supermarket to buy more food. In the second example, Jim goes to the supermarket again. He went the day before. As you can see, adding the word back emphasizes the idea that you go again to a place or you come again from a place. So, how about get back? It has virtually the same meaning. Here's not so important if you go or if you come. It sounds a bit more informal. For example, We didn't get back from the movies until midnight. Call me when you get back. I visited my uncle in France two years ago. And I can't wait to get back. Let's continue with get by. If you are in a situation that is not ideal, but you can, let's say, survive, you can use this one. For example, you don't have too much money, but you get by. You just have enough to survive. Let's see some examples. I can't get by with this old computer. Don't worry about me. I don't need any help. I'll get by. My English is not fluent. 
but I think I can get by in London. Let's continue with get over. Do you have a problem? Maybe you need to get over it. This expression means to recover, to overcome, to accept a problem or situation. Let's see some examples. John will need some time to get over the surgery and recover strength. Please get over it. I don't need more complaints. We'll have to close the shop if we can't get over the new taxes. Let's continue with get together. This means meeting with people, usually for social reasons. For example, let's get together this weekend. We can have a pizza. The customer and the business owner need to get together to discuss the problem. Let's continue with get in and get on. One of the most common meanings is to enter a vehicle. For example, Please, get in the car. We need to leave now. They get on the bus. When we use get in, we usually talk about a car. But when we use get on, it's more for buses, trains, etc. Let's continue with get out of and get off. The contrary to get in a car is to get out. For example, Okay, we have arrived. Let's get out of the car. How about a train, a boat, etc.? Here we get off. Yes, it seems there's no logic. But think about this. When we get off, it means that we are standing. And we walk out of the vehicle. We get off the vehicle. For example, this is our subway stop. Let's get off. Okay, now the last one is get up. Do you know this song? Get up, get on up. Get up, get on up. Okay, let's continue. So let's get back to get up. You are in bed in the morning. You are awake with your eyes open. And then you get up. Get on up. In other words, you're not in bed after you get up. For example, I got up early today to go to the gym. Tomorrow, I'll get up later than usual because it'll be Sunday. Don't confuse get up with wake up. First, you wake up and then you get up. You can, for example, wake up and spend some time in bed and finally get up. Get on up. Very good. Today we've covered a lot of stuff. We've seen get along and get on, go back, come back, get back, get by, get over, get together, get in and get on, get up and woke up. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Here I'll use the point of view technique. The main benefit of this technique is that it will help you to learn grammar intuitively without boring exercises or memorizing rules. This is how it works. I will tell you a short story more than one time. Every time I will change a grammar point. For example, I can change the tense or the person. This way, you will intuitively recognize the changes. Okay, let's start. The alarm rang at six o'clock, and Alice woke up. After ten pleasant minutes in bed, she finally got up and brushed her teeth.
After that, she had a lovely cappuccino that was prepared with a new coffee machine. Delicious. It was getting late, so she got in the car and started the engine. But wait, she forgot the documents for the presentation. She got out of the car, and she got back home. It was getting late. She got in the car again, and she drove to the office. As usual, there was a traffic jam. She hated it when traffic was terrible, but she needed to learn how to get over it because there was nothing she could do. When she got to the office, she said hello to Sam, one of her colleagues. Alice and Sam got along very well; they were friends. That day, she had an important presentation. She was nervous. But she knew she would get by. It wasn't the first time she had to give a presentation. After the presentation, her boss asked her to get together in his office. He offered her a better salary. She went back home very happy. Okay, I'll change the point of view to the present tense. You'll see how the verbs change. The alarm rings at six o'clock, and Alice wakes up. After ten pleasant minutes in bed, she finally gets up and brushes her teeth. After that, she has a nice cappuccino that she prepared with a new coffee machine. Delicious. It's getting late, so she gets in the car and starts it. But wait. She forgets the documents for the presentation. She gets out of the car and she gets back home. It's getting late. She gets in the car again and she drives to the office. As usual, there is a traffic jam. She hates it when traffic is terrible, but she needs to learn how to get over it because there is nothing she can do. When she gets to the office, she says hello to Sam, one of her colleagues. Alice and Sam get along very well; they are friends. Today she has an important presentation. She is nervous, but she knows she will get by. It's not the first time she has to give a presentation. After the presentation. Her boss asks her to get together in his office. He offers her a better salary. She goes back home very happy. Okay, it's the end of this short lesson. As you can see, just by changing a point of view of the story, you can learn grammar intuitively. Today we've practiced the phrasal verbs using two different tenses. Past and present. This is one of the techniques that I use in my premium courses. I recommend you to take a look at speakenglishpodcast.com/courses. Okay, this is the end of this episode. Remember to listen to it several times. It will help you with your English. See you next week. And have a fantastic day! Bye bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast dot com.